our enemy is the devil please bear that in mind and the devil is after two things predominantly i'm talking to people who have given their lives to the lord if you're not given the lives to your lord devil is on your side so he will not do anything you will be comfortable you will be happy you will get out of turn promotions you will get the best of the bonus here even if you are meets expectation you will get exceed expectation you are a believer of lord jesus christ you will be you need to develop further <laughs> right because if you are his child then god is for us and the devil is now against us and god the holy spirit has come into our lives so the one who is inside of us is much stronger than the one who is outside and the day we realize each day of our lives that the force that i have inside of me is much stronger than the force that is outside and doing all this nonsense you say lord i truly want to be your good soldier so put on the armor of god and get into this fight on your knees there is no other position for a christian to fight this war but the position of prayer prayer is the greatest weapon <laughs> greatest weapon and this is what was the message and i used few words i said watch the season and i'm just giving you the essence and the duty of a believer is couple of other things i will not explain but remember and if you were not aware of these duties now that you'll get aware in the next one minute don't sleep on your duty the first duty is to wake up if not now when will the church of christ truly wake up it is for us to be awake spiritually spiritually we need to be awake and realize that satan is attacking families and fellowships that is the target of satan god satan doesn't want our families to be united and fellowships to be united because he understands that there is power there when two people gather in my name god told that his presence will be there so that is where he is attacking so wake up the second verse was work out that is what the world is telling right for you to be healthy you need to work out right and third you need to walk walk right and this was the words i gave this is the these are the duties of a believer <clears throat> and we will just continue about these end days while you could google and get a lot of information about what is happening around end time events and all of that please remember the maximum persecution that is taking place even this i shared in the morning the maximum persecution that is happening against any religion in this world is again christianity christianity is the highest persecuted religion if you bracket christianity under a religion while we'll always say jesus never came to give a religion no <laughs> jesus came to give a relationship and i always keep that as my stand wherever i go and share or stand as his representative i make it a point to say that i don't follow religion and that is true and none of us are following religion honestly you are into a living relationship with a living god and that needs to be experienced cannot be explained cannot be debated no so he came to give a relationship but the world calls christianity as a religion that is fine with me and the maximum persecution is happening against christians 50 countries of the 200 plus countries i don't know how many countries are there 50 countries in 50 countries as we speak christianity is being persecuted the number one country being north korea and india is number 16 and over 100 million people are being persecuted as we speak 100 million is 10 crore people 150 people are being killed every month just because they are christian this is the world that we are living in as we speak and if we don't wake up 
you would have read in the papers or whatsapp messages or fb posts of november 13 paris killing 130 people dead couple of other injured of which 89 people were in a rock concert and the rock band that was playing there the name of the band was eagles of death this is google courtesy google if you don't know and they were while while the shooting happened random firing happened while nobody knew they were just freaking out there in that sense the song that they were singing is kiss the devil think about the irony and the lyrics of the song is who will kiss the devil who will love the devil who will kiss his tongue i will kiss the devil i will love the devil i will kiss his tongue and the devil said you love me so much come be with me that's exactly what has happened think about it and they were showing this horns of the devil i told in the morning in praise and worship never do like this this is devilish some people without knowing this say lord i lift your name on i know you are lifting that fellow and one day you will be lifted up like adnan sani lift karade <clears throat> and even this and if at all we need to worship lifting up our hands it needs to be open hands like this not pointing there are numerous devilish devilish symbols lot of people don't know and not that some people unknowingly you know put up i could take a separate workshop around that <clears throat> so these are end days there is no doubt about but yet god's word says that you know the coming of lord jesus christ the second coming the first part of the second coming will be like a thief and only god the father knows when to send jesus again he came the first time and i told it i guess couple of weeks ago that lot of people in this world forget in this world in our own country lot of people a reasonable percentage don't even know that jesus has come the first time so before we talk about second time tell them about the first time christmas is coming at least now you tell first you should put a star outside the house for for others to know that you are christian but nowadays fancy lot of people are putting up stars so just putting up a star doesn't even qualify to be a christian home because there are people who are celebrating all all festivals so christmas is also one festival so it is even more happy now no no diwali also we did we put up the star also we go to bethel because you know, you know pastor peter unnecessarily will get upset if i don't go <laughs> his bp shoots up and you know. so just to keep him happy <laughs> right so we need to first tell people who don't know about the first coming without knowing first coming second coming is i mean doesn't really make any sense so when there is so much that is happening around us and god's word clearly told you know how those days will be we will look at one passage you know it is it is um, so uh, different that suddenly you know when you read the gospels and other parts of the bible especially the gospels and especially the life of jesus christ you know the context is something and within that jesus gives a twist uh, that's why it's very interesting the pharisees you know if we go to quickly we're running short of time if you go to luke chapter 17 verse 20 that is the context and we'll quickly look at one life and learn four three things about this life because jesus mentioned about this person Luke chapter 17 was 20 I'm reading from the NKJV the version that I have now when he was asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come it is up there for us on the screen so we will just follow that now when he was asked by the Pharisees when the kingdom of God would come he answered them and said the kingdom of God does not come with observation and then he gives a lengthy answer okay go home and read I know you'll not have time whenever you get time and satan will ensure that you will not get time so the, the option is yours <laughs> okay and and then he goes on you know we, uh, there are a lot of things he says in, in verse 24 he gives the answer 
and and he says you know it will be like a lightning and from one side to the other and then he talks about the days of noah and he talks about the days of lot that is sodom and gomorrah and he goes on and gives how the kingdom of you know the, when the kingdom of god comes how things will be in this world and suddenly in verse 32 and that is why i said you know in all of this suddenly he utters one line there remember lot's wife i mean it's like they say no some it came out of the blue are you with me right go back and read the context is about can you tell us how will it be when your kingdom comes and he is is explaining all of that and he tells you know this is how it will be this is how it will not be and he gives certain examples days of noah days of lot and then he says suddenly who remember lot's wife in the bible it was never written about remember abraham obviously abraham is the father of faith right i mean if god has to really tell about him if we have to tell about somebody to be remembered whom will we talk about i mean we will talk about somebody who has achieved something big in life right are you with you with me nobody told remember god say i don't know whether i told something right or wrong i just told said remember the father of our nation gandhi don't remember god say right yes no it is never written in the bible remember abraham remember isaac remember jacob remember ruth no he is telling remember lot's wife what is what is lot's wife she got married to lot that i know she had two daughters they were staying in sodom and gomorrah right oh you didn't know about this sir huh? okay i'll tell you <laughs> she got married to lot she had two daughters they were living in sodom and when the city was being destroyed they were asked to run away and they came out she turned back became a pillar of salt what is what is lot's wife more than that that is lot's wife but when in the context of his coming Jesus is telling remember lots wife then then i actually have to really look in much more detail while i gave you the summary that's exactly what is lots wife life all about but jesus is telling i want to give a caution just remember her so what will we understand today in the next 15 minutes about lots wife three words quickly one is lots wife's privileges we will see quickly i'll give you a few she was a privileged woman what were her privileges second what was her problem third what was the punishment p p p p k 3 okay what was lots wife's privilege the privilege that she had which i directly relate to a lot of people who are here and many others who are born directly in christ believing families i am telling brown christians not believers you know i was born in a christian family my dad was the one who founded this church about 30 years ago 30 35 years ago and couple of generations backward they were all christ believing generations my grandfather's grandfather came to know the lord and after which we were born and that's a great privilege none of us chose our parents right has anybody had the opportunity to say so and so should be my dad and mom thank you you knew the answer he chose for us right he chose our parents and if you're born directly in a family where at least there is a tradition of going to church once a year at least right then at least two times they will come you know there are some people i believe who will come three times to church born in christian homes first is when you are hatched hatched is you know like an egg hatches when you are born you know they will bring as a baby uh, that is i mean 
irrespective of whatever this so once since god gave us this child so when you are hatched you will come the next time you will come is when you are getting matched match fixing because church is a nice place if in between if you are given your heart somewhere then nothing can be done if your heart is still with you and you say no let my parents like a good boy or daughter let my parents choose so matching happens here that is the next time you come for marriage third is dispatch then you don't have choice <laughs> so between hatch and dispatch get to know the lord at least if you're born in a christian family it's a big privilege and if we go back to lord's wife you know the the privilege of relationship relationship because she was since she was married to lot and lot was the nephew of whom abraham and abraham back then in genesis back then this was the only family as far as i know only family in this planet earth that was worshiping the living god think about it just think the privilege abraham's family abraham in genesis 12 we don't have time abraham left everything his religion his relationships his region and he accepted god's call god said leave everything i'll take you and i'll make you such a nation that i will bless you and abraham just walked and along with abraham lot came and his wife think about it such a privilege and if you're born in christian families where prayer is a routine in that sense reading his word is a routine or it is really strong your parents are truly born again believers then you are privileged to get into that relationship don't neglect it i have neglected it i paid a heavy price i'm talking about me i've told it hundreds of times i paid a heavy price for not understanding this great privilege of being born in a wonderful christ believing christ honoring family i lived a life on my own terms for which i paid a heavy price and i still continue to pay because what you sow so you reap right that is the law that god has kept and sometimes what we sown 10 15 20 years back the result will come now it will not be immediate i am talking of certain habits because i have abused this body with addictions and with drugs when i was 17 18 20 21 20 years old back then young person so there was strength but that is what i sowed so now at this age slowly the effects will keep coming out well god has pardoned the sin the consequences needs to be born here and that is okay god teaches us so she had the privilege of relationships she she was able to clearly see abraham's faith right and having seen his faith here is a man who left everything and abraham started constructing altars and honoring god and god was blessing abraham and along with abraham lot was also being blessed and she knew the blessings are because of god having had such a first time experience of looking at that wonderful faith of abraham she still moved away or that didn't really affect her and apart from that she was privileged not only with this wonderful relationship but a wonderful revelation of how abraham used to honor god because she was part of that close family she was able to clearly see how abraham's family was devoted to god and she was closely watching all of this but yet it didn't really affect her that is why you know a great man of god said why a lot of people can have the knowledge of god in their head 
if it doesn't go into the heart, they lose heaven in 18 inches distance. The distance between head and heart is 18 inches. So you could lose heaven with a difference of 18 inches. There is a lot of knowledge here. You know he is the one and only true God, living God. He paid for the sins of you and the mankind and all of that. But yet, nothing really changed your heart. Then you miss heaven. You miss eternal life. And Lot's wife was somebody. Having been acquainted with the revelation of what it means to worship a living God, she lost it at the end. These were the privileges. And she also knew the responsibilities that she had. That was the first, the limited time that we had. The second one was, which is very important to understand, while privileges were known, the second one was the problem. No, I, my lot of people's common question is, after being told so many times, not so many times, clearly they don't look back, why did she look back? Did you ever ask that question? Did it, did it ever come to your mind? Lot's wife turned back and she became a pillar of salt. If you go to Genesis chapter 19, it is clearly told, the instructions were so clear, but yet, and we will quickly see why she turned back, if you are struggling with that answer. Genesis chapter 19 and verse 13 onwards, it says, For we will destroy this place, this is the angels talking, and it says, For we will destroy this place because the outcry against them has grown great before the face of the Lord, and the Lord has sent us to destroy it. Next, go on. So Lot went out and spoke to his sons-in-law who had married his daughters. Get up, get out of this place for the Lord will destroy this city. But to his son-in-laws, he seemed to be joking. You know? Why did they get that impression? Well, this is not the time to discuss that. Lot is talking about a serious issue. Lot is talking about destruction of that city that they were living in. And his son-in-laws, they felt he was joking. That means... Most of the time, lost Lot was in jokes only. So people never took him seriously. Even when he told something serious, you know, there's nothing wrong in joking, but morning to evening, if it's always jokes, then when you talk about some fact, people will think it's the biggest joke. Are you with me? So they didn't take him seriously. And then, if you go on quickly, to the so Lot went out and spoke to his, go on please. Verse 15 and quickly, 15, 16. When the morning dawned, the angels urged Lot, saying, Arise, take your wife and your two daughters. Think about it. You know, the angels told him the previous day that the city is going to be destroyed. And they had to wake him up next morning. What kind of person is he? You know, if you, if you get a warning... <laughs> that Hyderabad is going to be stuck by some terrorist attack, confirmed news, how many of you will be happily sleeping? If not anything, you will take the immediate flight out or meet somewhere, right? When, when there was such a threat, lest you be consumed in the punishment of the city, and if you see, lot is still, go to the next verse, please. We don't have time. Verse 16, and while he, what? Lingered. Lingered, you know what? Still trying to see where is my TV, where is my fridge, where is morning breakfast. The city is going to get destroyed. The man took hold of his hand, his wife's hand. I mean, if you look at it, this is all because Abraham pleaded. You know, before these angels came to the city, Abraham was negotiating. Because they told him, we are going to destroy the city. He started with 50 people. And he went down and went down. Finally, he stopped at 10. And the angels told, yes, even if there are 10 people there, 
righteous people, I will spare the city. So they were less than 10 people. But yet, look at the, look at the grace of God. Even though these, this family didn't want to get out in that sense, God pulled them out. Still, Lot's wife didn't understand. That is why Jesus said, remember Lot's wife. That means I did everything for her to save her. Are you with me? Please think about it. Jesus mentioned specifically, remember Lot's wife because she was the most privileged woman, but yet she had such a problem. I'll tell you what that problem is. Let us go to the next verse. So it came to pass when they had brought them out. So they were literally dragged. Who? Lot, his wife, two daughters, four people. Pull them out. And then escape for your life. Do not look behind you or stay anywhere in the plains. Escape to the mountains lest you destroy it. Here also Lot is bargaining. He says, I think he's the most lazy fellow. What mountains? If that is the case, I'll run wherever. Is life important or our place is important? Oh, that is too far. Huh? I will not go. <laughs> For somebody to come to this to service, three kilometers, traffic. Live streaming is there, I'll see. Again, there'll be some buffering. Anyways, tomorrow they will upload. Whenever I want, I can pause and see. Where is the time? They are so comfortable. Sitting one hour is like, oh my God, one hour. The same thing doesn't happen when it is the same serial being aired 101 times. You know the next dialogue, but yet you will see. You'll, you'll be, you're so engrossed. Some cookery show, some eatery show, or some real time show. Kon banega karodpati? You will not be, you are bhikshapati. You know, begging. But still you want to see. K, B, C. To come to this, the billionaires of the billionaires, the riches of heaven and earth belong to this God, your father. Okay. Then Lord, okay, go to the previous verse, please. He says, let me, let me go. The angel says, go, go to the mountains. Go to that verse. Escape to the mountains lest you get destroyed. And verse 18 and 19, and then, then Lot said to them, Please, no, Lord. What? I can't go to the mountains. Indeed, now your servant has found favor in your sight and you have increased your mercy. Because he knows he's out of the city. Life is safe. Now he's bargaining. You know, I'll go somewhere here. Which you have shown to me by saving my life. But I cannot escape to the mountains. Lest some evil overtake me and die. God has saved him. Then the angel says, okay, go to this little place and stay there. I mean, can you imagine the grace and mercy of God? In situations like when, while God, I mean, fire is being brought down on a city and God is destroying them and here is one family which is not really faithful to God but there was one family and one man who was praying for them, pleading with God, my relative, please. And God pulls them. And in all of this, and Lot's wife is seeing all of this. What will you expect her? You'll expect her to really change. But she didn't. That is why Jesus said, you're living in end days and there are people like Lot's wives. There are people like that. And I don't want anybody to be here in that category. So her problem, why did she turn? It is a problem of her faith. We are losing time. Problem of her faith. Because, I mean, practically, I think what made her turn is, God told not to turn back. I don't think God will do anything. He's a nice God. You know, some people think, God may not do what he tells he will do. I'm telling you, if he tells he will do something, he surely will do. At least understand today. She felt that ah, God will keep telling, don't look back, don't look back. I know. And a lot of people, because we are in the grace period, are thinking it is fine. I'm telling you, if he says something, he will do something. He will, he will absolutely do what he says. 
both by way of showing his grace and both by way of showing his judgment. So she felt that fine, you know, it's okay. And the problem was not only about her faith, but about her face. A face in the sense, not features. The attitude. The attitude of always looking back. What is left behind? It was those possessions that people and her friends and all other things who were where? In Sodom. And great man of God said, she came out of Sodom, but her heart was still in Sodom. <laughs> she was physically pulled out, but her heart was still there. Since her heart was in Sodom, she turned back. She turned back. And that is where she lost out. And we've come to the close. The third one was the punishment. You know what the punishment is. She became a pillar of salt. I'll just quickly tell two words. So we saw her privileges. Second, we saw her problem. Third was the punishment. Unfortunately, the punishment was sudden. The punishment was serious. Just remember this. It was way too sudden. Till then, if you follow the story, go back and read it at least as a story. God tried different ways to tell that they are in a serious problem. And also saying that I have a way out. I have a way out. If you just obey what I am telling. And the same thing God is telling us today. That you know, while the situation is so alarming in that sense that a lot of forces are against, they are coming together, and the one behind is Satan. But it is for us to wake up and understand everything that is surrounding us and also say, Lord, we want to be really on fire for you. And for those who have not given their lives to the Lord, God is telling clearly, remember Lot's wife. I did whatever is possible for her and for that family to be saved, to be set free. But in all of that, she disobeyed. She disobeyed. She had disbelief. That was the problem. Disobedience and disbelief. One is don't look back. They said, what will happen? And the second one is disobedience, doing what God has told her or them not to do. And so the punishment was sudden and the punishment was severe. So what is the lesson for us? And with that I close. That we have to take God at his word. That's all. Whenever God speaks, while he always speaks, provided we listen, just take him at his word. The best thing to do in our lives. Because he tells clearly. And look at the Bible, look at the lives of people who have been obedient to him. And you will see this theme. All those people who have made a great difference for God are those who took him at his word. Heaven and earth will pass away, but this word will not pass away. So say, Lord, I will take you at your word. I will do exactly what you tell me to do. And you see how God works out his purposes and plans through your life. Well, Jesus gave different signs about how the time would be when the kingdom of God will come. In the middle of all of that, he just uttered one light for us as a caution. He said, remember Lord's wife. Let us bow our heads in prayer for the word that God gave us. Let us let's introspect ourselves and uh, if there is anybody here who wants to give his or her life to the Lord, I encourage you to do so right now. Not emotionally, but truly repenting within yourselves that you understand that you're a born sinner and Jesus is the Savior of this world. He paid the price for your sin on the cross. And you say, Lord, forgive me, accept me.
make me your child give me the assurance that my sins are forgiven and give me life life eternal and start living for him and for all those who have accepted him as the savior it is time for you to just see are you still looking back at certain things that you've left remember lot's wife what happened to her Our loving Heavenly Father, we thank you, Lord, for the word that you gave us, as you always do. I pray for all those who have given their lives to you, or Lord made a commitment that they not turn back, but make a difference for you. Strengthen them, establish them in your word, and help us, O Lord, to take you at your word each day of our lives. In Jesus' precious name, I pray. Amen.